Coming up, a segment from KTWU, your source for public television. Afterwards, don't forget to visit ktwu.org to make a pledge to help make more local programming like this. As our economy continues to sputter, places like the Topeka Rescue Mission attract more hungry and homeless people seeking assistance. In today's Plains People segment, we find out how the main man behind this mission puts his faith into practice. I boil it down to this. It's real simple. The Bible says there are really only two requirements of us in this life. Just two. We make it a lot more complicated than that. But two requirements. One is love God. Two is love your neighbor. <laughs> you know? So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to figure out how do we love God more and love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. I got kind of discouraged, didn't know what to do. And so I, I, I had a simple prayer one day and I was very sincere about it. God, I've read about you, I've heard about you, I've seen other people talk about you. Will you put me somewhere where I see you in action today? I just want to be where you're at. I, I want it to be relevant, I want it to be real. And it was on the heels of that and I didn't recognize it at the time when I was invited to come uh, to be the director here. And uh, I only did it because I really clearly un understood in my heart that was what I was supposed to do. I didn't know what it meant. Um, I didn't have a real passion for the homeless or the poor. I was just simply trying to be obedient to God. And, that's, and I can't really describe it other than I just knew this is what I was supposed to do. You know, that's uh, one of the most difficult questions I'm asked. Who are the homeless? And, and the best way I can say it, and it's kind of cliche -ish, is they are us. Yes, probably the majority of the folks that are going to come to us have um, gotten hooked up in some type of a, uh, a problem with drugs or alcohol, um, probably 60, 65 percent. I have um, friends that I know uh, in the business community who have uh, ended up here, lost everything. Last thing in the world they ever thought would happen to them. Uh, also, people on the other extreme who uh, have probably got a second or third grade education and don't know how to read um, and everything in between. They share one thing in common. They don't have a place to go right now or they wouldn't be here. Distribution Center is, um, lack of a better term, a very large warehouse. We established the DC here uh, back in 2003. We had been putting our um, different uh, supplies for the mission in all kinds of different places, but we wanted to have one place that we could bring everything that was efficient, large, but also would enable us to uh, do something more than just take care of folks who were staying at the mission. We have a lot of services here now for people uh, that need food, clothes, appliances, household items, pots, pans, dishes, forks, knives, a uh, table to eat at, a chair to sit on, a bed to sleep in. We actually have people in our community who do not have a bed. They're sleeping on the floor. And we give out hundreds of beds every year. Um, used mattresses, people donate to us. Everything that you will see in these facilities here is all donated. It's totally a community grassroots support uh, system. Average, we're probably about 240 a night. Average, we've gone up to about 290. That's the overnight part. Uh, we also have an open meal program to anybody in the community who's hungry that can come in for breakfast, lunch, or supper. So we'll have uh, on some occasions where we'll serve 600 meals in one, uh, one dinner. Um, if it was not for Project Topeka, I'm not sure that we would be able to do all we do. Uh, bottom line is when we're able to serve that meal or uh, put that food basket in somebody's hands, it means a whole bunch to them. And so, thank you.
Well, community safety is about everything. Our guests at the mission can be vulnerable uh, to crime. Having a safer community is beneficial for everybody, whether you're in a shelter, in your home, or you're on the street. Um, I happen to uh, be very uh, passionate about community safety, and so back in 07, I became the president of the coalition um, and uh, remain that today. What we're getting ready to do is go out on the streets. There's two reasons for that. One is we need to understand the demographics of what's out there right now. We're going to be looking at a map before we go out of what we know as the existing homeless camps in the community. So we just need to know. This is a bit of a barometer. What's out there? Number two is that we could see an exponential expansion of unsheltered homeless in our community. What are we going to do? Are we going to say we're full? We're already under a temporary variance with the city to put cots on the floor in both of our buildings. If we can't get them in here and there's nothing else out there, we need to be proactive and prepared to go out there and help people who are outdoors. How long have you been down here? We've about been down here so for now. about a month. Um, they are individuals who have run into some economic challenges, um, uh, job loss. Uh, they want to stay together as a family. They are Topekans. They want to stay in Topeka. Uh, but right now they are more comfortable there than they are in here. From day one, I never had a goal to build shelters. I never had a goal to create a distribution center. I never had a goal. I, I'm a day at a time guy. <laughs> I really am. It's, uh, let me grab this. Okay. Got it. You're welcome. This is how people move in. Yeah. Maybe all the possessions that they have. Um, I like to engage in things that seem impossible and see if they can be made possible. I tell you what, I mean, you look at all this, if you really get down to the nitty-gritty, is this possible? In Topeka, Kansas, to have donations at this degree to build all of these facilities with just donors? Is that possible? No, but yes, it happened. But really, when you think about it, it's not that possible to do. But in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, it says, love never fails. If I love those people down at the river, or if I love somebody who is not so lovable, I'm banking on the promise it won't fail. Immediate results? Maybe not. In my lifetime? Maybe not. But the point is, you can't go wrong by loving others. Is that easy? Absolutely not. We have to study what it means to love, and that's what we do here. We study what it means to love others, and we attempt to do it, and we attempt to share what we know with other people.